All right, first things first, let's take these guys off. I just have a couple little bolts just vaguely holding these on. Um, and show you guys what we're working with here. Um, so today I am aiming to go ahead and pull all the front suspension off. So take the covers off, disconnect the tie rod, disconnect the, the lower arm stabilizer. Um, I'm sure it's got another name, um, but then try to drop out the spring and, and everything and pull that out. Do that on both sides. And then <laughs> apparently there was a beehive in here. I'm gonna show you guys. Um, but then I'm gonna go ahead and try to, to clean up all this metal um, best I can, hit some of it with some rust encapsulator, um, hit some other pieces with some paint, um, just so it's clean and nice for when it goes back together and see what we can get done today. First, PB blaster, get some of these bolts hopefully loose so it won't be such a fight might need to order some more and of course the other part of LA is you can hear the sirens and stuff like that. Um, very common. The some of the challenges that come with doing this project is I've had the last few weeks of work off, which has been awesome um, for the fact that I've been able to spend more time with my wife than I've really ever been able to do. And she is a very appreciative of it, but my normal job has me traveling a lot. And so I'm usually gone for three weeks and then I'm home for two. And then I go for two weeks and I'm home for one, which the great part is, is when I'm home, I get to really focus on being home. Um, stuff around the house, which I'm sure I'm gonna have some uh, at home projects to do here soon. Um, painting and stuff like that, that I know, I know my wife wants to get done, um, which is fine, right? That comes with uh, being a husband. might take a little bit more persuasion than just a separator, but we'll see. Um, but it also, when I'm away, means that I can't be working on this because this is not my full-time job. I work in environmental and uh, travel all over the country, which is fun. I appreciate it. It keeps things from being too boring. And I get to see a bunch of places that I wouldn't ever normally get to see. The downside is less time at home and less time with my wife. And I'm sure eventually that could pose some other challenges. In the last few weeks, I've been able to work on this thing a lot more than I would usually. Now I'm gonna to try to keep some of the frequency up in relation to hopefully make videos like once a week or something and just try to get a couple videos ahead each time that I'm home.
but I appreciate the interest in what it is that I'm doing here and hopefully the final project. Oh, might have a stuck one, but that's okay. First case, I separate this from the steering center link and keep going. I'm going to try to get the lower stabilizer here. I was able to get, I was able to get the inner tie rod separated from the center link. So that's progress. I'm gonna take this spring cover off uh, and see what we're looking for. Looking there. Because ideally, I'd love to, find a way to get this spring out with, without even needing the spring compressor, but man, this thing is being a pain. I should make things a little bit easier. There's that. Or just webs and stuff. This is, it doesn't feel like it's heavily loaded in there, but the hard part is figuring out how I ever aim to get that spring out with, uh, without a spring compressor. Let's try something real quick. Oh yeah, that thing is loose enough to do it. So if I just pry it up a little bit, I should be able to pop it out, but I'm gonna wanna get these bolts out for the shock mount and get try to get the shock out before I do that. So, now understand, this is not something I would recommend anybody do. I would say do it the right way but I have also done and removed springs from many cars over the years. That's what I was looking, looking for. Okay. So basically by undoing the cross shaft for the shock, I was able to get underneath it and pry it loose. And then now if I just undo the lower control arm and upper control arm, I should have all this stuff out. Okay. Boom. Who's that guy? So 
This is the uh, this is the upper control arm. This is the lower control arm. This is the inner tie rod, outer tie rod. The spindle that also is the foundation for all of the brake assembly stuff. And now I got one side apart. Is all that going to turn away? Yeah, all this stuff. Well, I may put this in a box okay. to clean up later. Mm -hmm. um, since there's nothing wrong with these parts yeah. and maybe rebuild them and mm -hmm. sell them. I don't know. Because mm -hmm. um, if I can make more money, then yeah. make more money. Um, but yeah, I got the other side to do, but good timing. I'm going to take a break. I need food. I'm going to eat some food. Let's make some food. Yeah. Getting up and going. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I did the other side, I know what I need to do on this side to make it go a lot faster, um, which makes me very happy. So that's what I'm going to prepare to do right now is get all this stuff apart and keep it moving the best way possible. There's also a little more room because the caliper bracket and the backing plate are also not on this side. So it'll be easier to just kind of run through getting these things undone. Um, now, I would never recommend doing it the way that I'm doing it because you could hurt yourself and I wouldn't want that. That would weigh poorly on my conscience and I would not want anybody to get hurt because they did things the way that I did things. I am not a pro. In fact, I am, I have quite the proclivity of being an idiot. And uh, I would not want somebody to get hurt just because they copied me. Maybe I'll have better look on this outer tie rod end. Nice. That is awesome. That is, it makes me very happy.
There we go. All right. So one thing I have to make sure I keep it, are these um, upper spring perch um, because these will actually be used on the new coilover system for the top from Church Boys um, to help locate the upper strut rod like location. Um, one of the annoying parts is though, I haven't been able to get the bolts loose for the strut rod mount or the shock mount on that because the little um, press in um, side, they're all loose. And so I'm gonna have to grab them with like a channel lock or something and um, hold them while I try to loosen them because <laughs> they wouldn't unbolt earlier. And that's just the way it goes with these old cars sometimes, but it is what it is. Got these old little, you know, there's like a seal in here. Got these little tabs, but they're old, so I just snap them off like this. And this whole thing will come out pretty easily. And I can replace that later. Okay, time to start cleaning this up. Grab the wire wheel and get dirty. of stuff and then kind of getting in there by hand um, I painted it with a like wool bar black paint because I needed to get a coating on there because we have some rain coming in unfortunately tomorrow and this is the last day I get to work on this for the next couple weeks so we can show you a after and then essentially the before which obviously the before is is old and a little rusty and whatnot but the after looks great and the OCD guy in me really wants to have this thing completely stripped down and made perfect before putting it back together but that's not the goal right now and my wonderful wife reminded me of that as she was asking me um, her million questions because she always has great questions and I always appreciate her asking me the things that she doesn't understand um, so when I get back I will be doing the other side the engine compartment and all that stuff so at least the stuff is all the rust scaling is knocked off and cleaned up and at least this thing's got some protection so then all of this stuff on the front end looks like this. So step at a time. <laughs> 